Hi everybody, this is Jacob Reed from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be going over question number two from the 2014 macroeconomics exam. This one is all about labor markets. You punch it at 8.30 every morning, except you punch it at 7.30 following a business holiday, plus it's a Monday, then you punch it at 8 o'clock. Punch it late, and they got this. For this question, we have Ray's stable. He hires workers in a perfectly competitive labor market. We need to draw both the market and the graph for Ray's stable. Start off with two side-by-side -side graphs. Both of them, you will have quantity on the x-axis and wage on the y-axis. In the market, you're going to have a downward sloping demand curve, upward sloping supply curve. Mark that equilibrium quantity and the equilibrium wage as the question asks for. Carry the equilibrium wage over to that firm graph. That wage becomes the marginal factor cost for Ray's stable. Since Ray's stable is hiring in a perfectly competitive market, it can hire as many workers as it wants at that wage set by the market. Ray's stable is a wage taker. That becomes the supply curve for the firm. You will also have a downward sloping demand curve for Ray's stable. It is equal to the marginal revenue product of his workers. Where those two curves intersect, that will be the quantity of workers that Ray's stable hires. A little side note, make sure you also, as the question requires, mark the wage that Ray's stable hires, and it is equal to that market wage. If you have all of that here, you've got the points. Part B asks us to determine if Ray's stable's marginal factor cost is equal to, less than, or greater than the wage set by the market. As I just mentioned in the last question, the wage that the market sets comes all the way across to the firm's graph, and that becomes the marginal factor cost that Ray's stable faces. The reason why, that's the explain point here, is that Ray's stable is a wage taker. That means the price, or the wage in this case, is set by the market. That's what happens in perfectly competitive markets. Each individual firm has no power to set the wage or the price. In this case, the wage. And if you got that, both the fact that it is equal and the explain that the market sets that wage, you get your point here. For part C, we have to show the impact on the graph if the government imposes an effective minimum wage. Effective means that it's binding and it will actually do something. So we're not going to be at equilibrium anymore. A minimum wage is also a price floor. If you remember correctly, price floors go above equilibrium when they're effective. So draw in a minimum wage above the old equilibrium. I suggest you carry it on over to that firm graph. And that's how you're going to get the point here. Anywhere above that old equilibrium. For the second part of C, we need to show the quantity of labor supplied at the new equilibrium wage. From that equilibrium wage, the new minimum wage, you go across until you hit that supply curve. Drop down, that is your quantity supplied at the new effective minimum wage. Get that all together and you've got your point here. For the third section of question C, we're looking at the impact of the minimum wage on the marginal revenue product of the last worker hired by Ray Stable. The new minimum wage increased the marginal factor cost for Ray's stable. And the number of workers Ray's stable hires is always going to be where the marginal revenue product equals the marginal factor cost. That intersection moved up the marginal revenue product curve. And that means that the new quantity of workers hired has decreased and that last worker hired is now at a higher marginal revenue product than the previously last hired worker. So all you have to do here is just say increase and you'll get your point. And there you have it. If you got all of that right, you are definitely on your way to acing your next economics exam. If you want to support this channel, make sure you like and subscribe below. Then head over to reviewecon.com where there are lots of review activities and games to help you practice the skills you've been learning in economics. If you want to support this channel even more, Make sure you head over to reviewweekend.com and purchase the total review packet, 
with everything you need to know for the AP microeconomics and macroeconomics exams. Thank you. I'll see you next time.